Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the third episode of On the Topic of Racing. Yes, the third episode. We are into this, and uh, we're going to get going here uh, because there's something I want to talk about that's been kind of a... It, it's not really been big news, but it's been some kind of news. Uh, recently, Adam Stern, a few days ago, had posted something that NASCAR officials had considered to possibly adding a hybrid system, uh, at least the ability to add in a hybrid system onto the, uh, the chassis for the Gen 7 car, I believe is what it is, and I have a few questions about this, because obviously this is probably in the very early stages of something that could happen with NASCAR, and I'm not someone who's actually completely opposed to a hybrid system if they can do it right, because there's a few things that I've seen historically that could have an issue with it. And I've got a few arguments that I kind of want to um, go over with you. Because the first thing I, I have uh, as a concern with adding hybrid systems is you're going to lose cars and you're going to lose a lot of fans over this. Because a lot of fans don't want this hybrid system. They're, they're just like, they, they think that NASCAR needs to be purely what it's been since the 1950s, I think. Uh, there's a lot of people who've been watching NASCAR since the 80s when Dale Earnhardt came into NASCAR and since NASCAR has been televised, and those people are what I would consider the diehard fans that are still here, even with all the bullcrap that's been going on recently. And I'm one of those people that came into NASCAR, uh, as a kid, so I've, I've had a little bit of experience with the sport, and one thing that really kind of irks me is the fact that none of the other stock cars... No, 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 no other stock car series would ever tr would be doing this. And what I say when I what I mean when I say that is that when you look at short track stock car racing, when you look at you know the worldwide or not worldwide because stock car racing really isn't worldwide. Let's be honest. But if you look at wor uh, nationwide, you have really not much change in the cars as far as the uh, the basic formula is concerned and not only that but you're changing something that uh at least right now you really have no reason to change it to other than maybe it'll attract attract manufacturers and that that's one of the big problems that i find with um teams adding or not teams um sports adding changes to attract you know motorsports attracting trying to attract manufacturers by doing something weird um as far as adding a hybrid system, maybe they could do it like a maybe they could add like maybe a fourth series or something like that that runs on a limited schedule. That's like not the truck series, not the not the not the uh, Xfinity series, but more of like a showcase series, I guess you could say. That uh, some teams could add, you know, they have the ability of adding two cars or have one car, and they kind of showcase what they think that this hybrid system can do. And I think that they could do have this showcase series be like a NASCAR experimental showcase series or something like that to, to start with this stuff. Because experimenting in the Cup Series right now is... I, I think a lot of people are getting annoyed by it because the fact that they really have no way to experiment other than actually having it in the series. So, um, And one of these things that... Uh, and, and a few of the arguments were the fact that if they didn't add something like a hybrid system, they're not going to attract the manufacturers... But there's other ways that they can attract more manufacturers. Obviously, one of the big takeaways from NASCAR and one of the big uh, drawbacks is the fact that you have to have a 950 horsepower V8 engine. The, the easiest thing that they could do is just make it so that way they remove the tapered spacer and they cut the power of the engine uh, in general. Instead of having a 950 horsepower V8, you can have like a 550 horsepower V8 stock without a tapered spacer in it. And that's the thing. You're making an engine that has to go at a certain power, but you're cutting the power so much that it doesn't even matter that it's at that power, other than the fact that you need to make it have the maximum amount of power that it's being cut. Which is which is kind of annoying, considering the fact that they could have literally just said, hey, hey NASCAR teams, uh, you, you have to make 550 horsepower engines now. And I feel like what this has kind of been is more or less everyone's got those engines around and they don't want to get rid of them. So they've pretty much just said, well, 
why don't we just t put a tapered spacer on there and then we'll figure it out with the Gen 7 car. And that might be what the case was uh, as far as things are going. Another thing that I would like to uh, point out is how would they use something like a hybrid system? Because a hybrid system is an extra part of the powertrain. And what it can do is possibly uh, they could use it to, you know, power down the engines even more and then use it as a supplement during the race. But at the same time, they're still making the same amount of power. It's just they have a smaller engine in there, I guess you could say. Um, one of the arguments was road relevance. Re relevance? Relevance. What was road relevance? And my biggest t my biggest complaint with that is that most of NASCAR now is um, either trucks with V8s and not really any of them have hybrid systems yet. I think a few manufacturers are trying to get into that, but not very many. Um, but you also have the uh, the Camaro, which doesn't have a hybrid system, the Mustang, which doesn't have a hybrid system, the Supra, which has a V6, and I don't believe has a hybrid system. The only vehicle that NASCAR runs right now that has a hybrid version is the Toyota Camry. That's literally the only vehicle that NASCAR runs that doesn't have a that has a hybrid system. So road relevance is actually quite irrelevant at the moment with hybrids until maybe you start adding in a Mustang hybrid and I don't know if GM's ever going to go hybrid with the Camaro at least in recent in uh, at least um, in uh, close year I, I don't know what to say in the next few years I don't think they're gonna add a hybrid to the Camaro let's just say that uh, although they did add a four-cylinder to the next gen so I, I could I don't know uh, another thing that another argument that was uh, brought up was an increase in vehicle power, and my last argument with the fact that one of the biggest takeaways is the fact that they got a big 950 horsepower V8 with a tapered spacer, and they've been trying to cut power the last I don't know how many years. Uh, they're not looking to increase power, so adding a hybrid system to increase power. Uh, probably not going to be the biggest draw for NASCAR, at least. Um, one thing that I do think that they could use it for is a push-to-pass system, or maybe just have it as a supplemental system during cautions and going down pit lanes, so that way, you know, if... It, it, could, it could actually be used more like a speed limiter, I guess you could say. Like a cruise control, like you set it at a... You set the hybrid system to run at a certain speed and then it piggy and then it goes back on the and then it like backs up off the engine so like pit speed pit speed limit and then pace speed limit could be and and that that seems like a fine thing to me if they add something like that where you have the hybrid system running the car so that way you're not actually using any gas during the uh during the pacing laps and that's and, and that changes up the strategy a little bit because now you don't have that issue where if there's like a bunch of cautions and you're trying to save fuel, well, now you have an automated system that lets you save fuel. But also, one thing that they could do, and this could be just like a road course edition for the road cars, because those are obviously completely differently built to the oval cars, is they could have a system where uh, you add power to the car when going down a long straightaway. So, getting off the S-curves at uh, Watkins Glen and going down the back straightaway... Uh, getting off of the uh, oh crap what was that called what's that corner called getting off of the uh, the hairpin at uh, Sonoma getting in onto the oval uh, at Charlotte and uh, out of the uh, out of the slow chicanes and stuff like that that could be a relevant that could be a relevant addition because that's usually what a lot of teams in other motorsports do uh, but my biggest thing with something like that would be the reliability issues, and not only that, something like something could be going on, something could go on like what was going on with uh, Nissan and their DP, and their uh, not DP, uh, their LMP1 program with the the front engined, um, the front engine rear wheel drive uh, LMP. So that's another thing that kind of that that. Was it front engine rear wheel drive? Or I think it might have been a uh, 
a front wheel drive vehicle. I I don't know for I don't know for sure. I'd have to go back and look at it, but I I'm not going to do that right now. Um, but at the same time, again, you still have that idea where you're costing the teams more, and you're going to drop a lot of those lower end teams. And those are the kind of teams they may be at the back of the field, but those are the teams that you need to keep to keep NASCAR running because they can't really bank off of the uh, off of the big teams if they don't have you know those lower end teams to keep running because once you have I don't know once you drop down to like 30 25 cars then you start then you start getting into the oh crap we're getting into a bad place here kind of situation and another thing was that this would probably be a better chance to get a, to keep the V8 engines in Cup Series. Uh, probably not. Probably not. If they were going to go with a hybrid, they'd probably cut the power even more and maybe change the engine out. There's a few different options that I thought would be better. And uh, that's kind of one of the things that I really think that would probably kill the V8 off. It's the fact that now you can make up that power and not have to have a giant engine inside the car. And that's kind of the draw with NASCAR, at least for some people. The fact that you've got this formula that's... It's kind of ancient, and but that's kind of what stock car racing has been. It hasn't really been, you know, follow the uh, the technology of the time. It's been, you know, what is what is the most popular car on the road right now, I guess you could say. And if they wanted to keep... And if they wanted to make really really big strides towards road relevance again they should probably do kind of what v8 supercars does and uh use the actual body panels off of the cars obviously change some things around so that way they can have i guess the coupe styles still in the stock car although v8 supercars doesn't really do too bad without with the uh, the sedan style but that's their thing and another thing too is just, again, there's not much right now that's really said how they're going to implement all these hybrid systems, and quite frankly, I'd like to see some more substance in this before I actually make a decision as to whether this could be good or not. So I'm one of those people who likes to wait a little bit, and there's a few things that I'm really not too keen on just for the fact, just for the simple fact that it just doesn't seem like a good idea right now. And there's a few things that they should probably be focusing on more than, you know, adding a hybrid system to a stock car. So, that's going to be it. I think I'm done rambling for now. Uh, This is the third episode of On the Topic of Racing, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys for listening in.